documented, a film by an undocumented American, written, produced, and directed by Jose Antonio Vargas, who joins us now in our New York studio. The film opens tonight in New York at the Village Eats Cinema, coming to theaters all over the country. It's set to air on CNN this summer. Jose, welcome back to Democracy Now! Talk about the your journey and your journey now in the context of what's happening in Washington, D.C. Um, well, thank you for having me here. I actually live just a few blocks away, so it's always nice to be here. Um, I'm more convinced now than I was three years ago when I outed myself that before we change the politics of this issue, we have to change the culture of this issue, right? I've done about 200 events in 42 states, traveling around the country while filming this film. and. The fact that people still think we're all, quote-unquote, Mexicans, if there's anything wrong with being Mexican, and the fact that people think this is, you know, a Latino criminal issue, right, tells us kind of the long ways we have to go. And I have to tell you, like, for me, the most tragic thing doing all the traveling is how many people, after they find out that I'm Filipino, <laughs> people say illegal and Mexican interchangeably. I mean, I have to say that that's, for me, the most tragic thing. And that's a, that's a big cultural problem, right? People think that just because you happen to be brown or Latino in this country, you're not even supposed to be here, even if you were born here. Um, and so I really wanted to make a film, and this is why I wanted to direct the film myself, you know, to make a statement, right? And to me, the film is a cultural statement, not a political one. I, I work pretty hard to make sure that it isn't overly political, just so I can play it in places. I've done some couple of tea party screenings um, and doing a lot more conservative kind of oriented events. But you started out, as I understand it, to make a film about the dreamers, and yes. somehow or other, you then decided uh, reluctantly to focus on your own story. Can you talk about uh, that transition? Very reluctantly. Well, first of all, I mean, I, after, you know, the privilege of outing myself in the New York Times, I mean, it was a 4,000-word essay, and I just, after that, I thought I was done. I didn't want to have to say anything more than that. Um, and so originally, my, actually, my original idea was um, Inside Job for Immigration. Charles Ferguson's film was an original inspiration. And then when I started filming, I was like, eh, do I really want to over-politicize this issue? So I'm like, waiting for Superman meets the Dream Act, right? At least that was my conception in my head. And then about a year into filming, it kind of shifted. Um, one of my filmmaker friends said, you can't do this film and not put your mom in it. Um, then I decided to send a film crew to the Philippines. I mean, how do I direct a film if I can't even go to the Philippines to film her? Right? So I sent a film crew. And because it, you can't leave Because I can't country. leave this country. I've been here since I was 12, 18, uh, 21 years since August. Um, so I sent a film crew, then the footage gets back. And, you know, as you saw in the film, there's like, you know, footage of my mom just looking straight into the camera. And that was just, you know, I've seen more of my mother in this film editing her than I have in 21 years. So it's just very surreal, <laughs> I have to say. So then you made the decision to focus more on, on your yeah. own story and, your fa and the impact on your family of, yeah. of, of, the, uh, of, the, of your immigration status. And, but this is what happens, right? This is how you, how do you explain? I couldn't write, you know, 21 years of not seeing her. I could not write that. But in some way, the film shows that, right? Like when she and I Skype for the first time on the film, um, that's the experience and the reality for so many, you know, immigrants of this family who are separated from their families all across the world. So I wanted to capture that kind of experience. Um, and I think the film does that. Talk about your own experience. You ta you said you came to this country at the age of 12. Age so 12. You, yeah. Then your mother sent you here. My mother put me on a plane with a stranger who I thought was my uncle. But, you know, we're Filipinos. So everybody's an uncle. Um, so I thought everything was fine. I got here when I was 12, and then I thought, you know, my grandparents, my mother's parents treated me like I was one of their own. And then four years after I got here, I went to the DMV to get a driver's permit, and that's when I realized that the green card that my grandfather had given me was fake. So that's when the lies kind of started. And then a year after that, um, thankfully for me, I discovered journalism. And the only reason I did it you know, we didn't have books at home. Writing wasn't like a—I <laughs> come from a lower-middle-class family of, you know, workers, service workers. But writing for me was interesting because it meant that my name would be on a piece of paper, you know, like Juan Gonzalez, New York Daily News. <laughs> I figured that was a way to just exist. And so I thought if I could be in the piece of paper, that would meant that I'm here, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought I could just, like, keep doing that. And that's what I did for— 
13 years, until I was 30. And, of course, then in the, your time in The Washington Post, which I'm sure was covering uh, uh, immigration problems and the Actually, undocumented— no, I ran away. I mean, I remember the guilt I felt during the 2005, you know, during the 2005, 2000, those rallies that happened, right? In 2006, I mean, I, yeah. I must have been the only Jose anywhere in the, in the Washington, D.C. newsroom, and I wanted to run away as fast as I could. Did your employers know you were No, no, of course not. I mean, I, I lied. I lied in the forms, um, and that's what really makes my case more complicated. Because I, when I outed myself in the New York Times and also in the film, I admitted to that because I have to, right? I mean, I feel like what's really lacking in this issue is a sense of intellectual honesty, right? There's a great documentary called *The Harvest of Empire*, yes. for example, right? I mean, yes. I watched that documentary. So Juan's it, film actually just aired on the Capitol uh, Tuesday night. Oh, great! Yeah. But like. How do we have a conversation about immigration and not include that right. conversation? Right. You know, I mean, there's, there is, and the public, you know, my travels have really shown me that the American public is ready for an honest conversation on this issue. Not the same talking points that we hear over and over and over again. So what was the response to you outing yourself, both in your workplace well, uh, at the Washington Post and also the U.S. government? Well, you know, I decided actually that I, when I outed myself, I basically left all of my jobs. Um, you know, I thought about this pretty carefully, so I can't be employed by anybody, but this is where it gets really interesting. I can actually employ people. So I have an LLC. That's why, you know, I made a film and I hired, I don't know, 40 people total probably to just do the film. Um, so it's been really interesting that way because now I've been forced to become an entrepreneur that way. But the reaction from the journalistic community in general has been rather interesting. I feel like somehow they just took away my <laughs> journalistic, <laughs> kind of like, hey, here, you're not a journalist anymore. Now you're this act advocate activist thing. Um, and my question to that is, what do you think am I advocating for? And why is it that when people of color or gay people or women, you know, say something, it's called having an agenda, and yet when other journalists say it, it's called having an analysis. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's really an interesting question. Let's go to a clip from oh. your film, Documented, a film by an undocumented American.